So my name is Matt Beck, like John said. I have, uh, I've been a hairdresser for 11 years. I started out instantly right out of school. I wanted to do this. I, I found out that there was another part of the industry, which is education. Uh, I fell in love with educating. So I started working for Paul Mitchell for, for quite a while. I worked for them for nine years. Uh, I had a great time doing that but just felt a little empty in certain ways and I wanted to be able to share education with as many people as possible. So that outlet for me was I love filming and editing and uh, creating content. So we just started filming and my pal Thad back there, me and him one night having beers, we decided to cut mannequins and put a video on YouTube. And so in a year and three months, we have nine million views on YouTube and uh, 100,000 subscribers. So we've grown a lot, the company's grown, everything really is free. Uh, there's no gimmicks there, so you can go on there and watch videos all day long. We do an hour long podcast every week for hairdressers, so it's all about business and we share industry news and celebrity hair things. We just sit around a bunch of hairdressers just having fun. So definitely check out the website. Today what we're gonna talk about and what uh, I love doing uh, this program, and this program has been an evolution of things that I've learned from John and just different people that I've looked up to in the industry. So it's almost like you just took John's class and I'm about to show you what I did after I took John's class. So he gave you ideas about loyalty programs. I'm gonna show you my loyalty program. Everything that he talked about today, I've done at my salon and it's been very successful. So we're gonna talk about the little changes that you guys can make right now, today, uh, tomorrow, when you get back into the salon, make those changes and you'll get big results from it and you'll be more successful. So we're gonna start off, my favorite question to ask is who is your favorite guest in the salon? Does anybody tell me? Who's your favorite guest? The person in the chair. Person in the chair, it doesn't matter. Okay, all right, that matters to me sometimes. Okay, yeah, I love that. Anybody else? Yeah, every week client that comes to see me as part of like family. Exactly. So my favorite guest in the salon is the person that comes in the most often. And the reason I like that person so much is because I get to know them. There's the person that comes in every six months, I forget their name, I don't know, if they, I forget that they have kids, I forget everything about them because you can't build a relationship with somebody over a six month period of time seeing somebody every six months. My favorite guest is a person that I know everything about them. They come in, we have a good time. They're following everything I need. So their frequency of visit is huge. They're spending money in the salon, but it's not because they're spending money that I like them. It's because I get to really take care of their hair. And that's the whole purpose of what we do. So the person that comes in every six months has the worst hair we've ever seen, correct? Now, here's another great question. Uh, who's your least favorite guest? This person usually has a name. <laughs> yes, Rhonda. Rhonda, exactly. Okay, anybody else? We won't film your face in this. Right, <laughs> Rhonda, do not watch. Um, but the least favorite guest is usually a person, but it's a type of person, and sometimes it's that every six month person, but usually our least favorite guest comes in uh, pretty often as well. <laughs> I feel like every week I see that person. Um, so. You know, it's just finding out how you get more of the person that you really like in your chair because every day we're servicing people, we're trying to build a career and we want that career to be fun uh, and if, if it's not fun, then nobody, none of us want to do it. So we got to figure out, so what I'm going to talk to you guys about today is how do we create that favorite guest in almost everybody. So creating loyalty, John talked about this a little bit. I wanna talk about uh, the old ways of loyalty and the new ways that we're doing it in the salon now. Uh, people are not loyal unless they have a reason to be. And uh, how many people think that's true? Yeah. I mean, this is true in everything, right? In everything in life, if, if you don't give your partner a reason to be loyal to you, if you stop talking to them, you, you don't pay attention to anybody, they're not gonna be loyal to you either. Clients are the same way. You have to make sure that you're catering to them you're building loyalty programs, you're giving them reasons to come back to your salon or your business. And you know, so these, I'm gonna show you guys our program. So this is the old ways of loyalty. Buy 10 haircuts, get one free. The whole punch card thing, right? All of us have done it. Um, pizza places do it as well. So I don't like to uh, do the same thing as a pizza place. Plus I always lose that damn card by the time I get to the ninth one. So I never get the free thing anyways. 
So the old way, we got to stop doing that kind of stuff because that doesn't really create loyalty. It also doesn't help frequency of visit because just because they come in 10 times, they could come in 10 times in the next two years. That doesn't mean that we're pushing them to come in sooner. Uh, another one is coupons in the paper. Obviously, that is a thing of the past. Most of us are probably not doing that anymore. I haven't read a newspaper ever in my life, so I'm not saying that you guys haven't. But in a new generation of people, we're not reading the paper. And when you're looking for a clientele, I don't think that that's the best way. You're going to spend thousands of dollars, and you're not going to get the return. Um, Thirsty Thursdays and Two for Tuesdays promotions. Now, these are creative names. I love them. But when you post them on Facebook, the day that you want them to come in, it's never going to work. So we have to make sure that we're not just putting things out there for people and praying. You have to come up with a plan. Um, and that's really the goal of marketing and really focusing on our business is we're not looking at right now what we should do. It's not like you go in the salon tomorrow and say, this, all right, we got to do stuff on Facebook. We got to start posting things. You have to come up with a plan for the future. What are we going to do next week on there and get it scheduled and get it ready to go? So uh, those are just some other things. This is our loyalty points program. Uh, this is also on your little thumb drive. Uh, and again, this will be available on the internet as well. But this is through Millennium. Uh, it's earned 500 points for booking your next reservation. That's $5. So just like I said, it's like I took John's class and now I just made it, right? Earned 500 points for booking your future reservation. Earned 1,000 points for referring a friend, which is $10 in my salon. So I'll give you $10 if you send somebody in. 1,000 points sounds like a lot. $10 is a great discount for a guest, but I got a new client out of it, so I'm happy to give the $10. 200 points for trying a new service. Try something new. That's, that's the whole purpose. If you keep doing the same thing on your guests every single time, they're going to leave. After the six visits that John was talking about uh, with your uh, retention, you're not going to have that guest anymore if you do the same thing on them all the time. Earn 200 points for any product purchase over $30. This is customizable within Millennium, so I love it because I said, you know, I'm not going to give them points for just buying products, but I'll give them points for buying over $30 in products. So basically, I gotta get, I'm forcing them to buy over two products to get points for it. And then earn one point for every dollar spent. Just like John said, I've never heard him say that before, but just for spending money, you shouldn't really get points. But it is nice to do it, and, and it, I think it makes them constantly earning points, but I only give them one point. So they have to, just to get a dollar, they'd have to spend a hundred. So it's not a big uh, expense there. Any questions on that? Sweet. This is a loyalty card that we give. Um, this is for somebody that if we're trying to uh, get somebody to come back into the salon quicker than they normally do. So if you have that guest, you're trying to get them from going six weeks to come in four. Um, what this does, it's basically it says, thank you for being a loyal guest. Gratitude would like to offer you 10% off your next visit. Present this card at your next reservation by the date below. So we can write a date on that card for four weeks. So they have to come in within that four weeks. If you want them to get a blowout, you could write it for two weeks. Give them uh, an opportunity to get something that they don't normally get in the salon. So this is just a, a cool card. It's kind of a secret weapon. You don't have to give it to everybody, but you can give it to the people that you're trying to get to come back in more often. Now, systems in the salon. Can anybody name systems that they use within the salon or what a system is? Anybody? Like Pre-booking like pre system. system, okay. What else? How, we answer the phone. How you answer the phone. That's a good, okay, good. Give a tour. Give a tour, okay. What else? So systems are important to have in place in your salon because let's say your salon's open right now and you guys are here. Well, how is your salon being run? You have to have systems in place to help it run the way that it does. These are some systems that I have. So guest greeting. Now, I don't tell my staff, listen, you need to look them in the eye, you need to shake their hand, because that's the old way of thinking. What needs to happen in a guest greeting is my staff is completely friends with every client that comes in there. So, we have, uh, I'm going to tell you why we know all their names and everything, but when they walk in the door, everybody says hello um, because we want it to be an environment that's very welcoming for people. There's nothing worse, and I've walked into a lot of salons in 10 years, than walking into a place that you feel uncomfortable. So you feel like everybody's busy and they're too busy for you because they're there to spend money 
and that money is going to help the salon get better. So your whole staff needs to, to be on board with that, whether it's their guest or not. So the guest greeting is really important. A beverage menu, do you guys offer that? This is pretty standard, I think, now. Uh, a couple years ago, it wasn't a big deal. Uh, uh, now Keurig came out, so we can offer all kinds of stuff in one little thing. But having a beverage menu, I think, is really important. Um, in Pennsylvania, we can serve alcohol. I know Tabitha doesn't believe in it, but I do. I think it's, I would like to have a drink when I'm getting my hair cut. So, but you gotta serve it in the right way. We serve wine and champagne, and we serve uh, different kinds of local beers at the salon so that people feel comfortable. And we don't serve them more than one, so we don't have crazy people there. But, um, and then we offer coffee and hot chocolate and water, and we present a menu to them. So this is the thing you gotta think about. Somebody walks in the salon. If, if you were to come up to me today um, and ask me if I would like anything or if I'd like a, a glass of water or a bottle of water or something, I would tell you no, I'm good, because I don't want to inconvenience anyone. So when you walk into my salon, I want to make sure that you have water right away. We don't even ask. So we give you water, and then we give you the beverage menu so that you can pick something else if you would like it. But you don't want somebody there uncomfortable whatsoever, so you just serve them what they need. Uh, station setup. You got to get the station set up to fit the salon. So right as soon as that guest is done, whether you have assistance or not, I just got an assistant for the first time. I was punishing my staff, not really. But I decided, I have a four chair salon with six staff. And um, I enjoy having a four chair salon, it's my favorite. It allows me to be able to go on the road and I don't have to worry about it so much. Um, but we didn't have a front desk and we didn't have an assistant for a long time. And I, my whole staff got involved in answering phones and helping each other while they were doing hair. So if they weren't busy, they would help out. And I think it's really important. Now, with Station Setup, we have an assistant, we're really busy, we're, at, um, we're working on the productivity, we're pu pushing clients away right now, so that was something I took from John today that I need to really focus on. Um, but the Station Setup is so important because if you're really, really busy in the salon, that, that guest should not be brought to the station until it's completely set and ready for them. Um, so I'm gonna show you guys, well, what we do is we have a cape, uh, a smock, we, we got these new, this new furniture from Minerva Beauty. Um, and we had usually just had Ikea furniture, so just a mirror on the wall and a little shelf. But now we got these beautiful cabinets that have like, uh, we can put the capes, smocks, everything is ready to go right there. So we just fold them and every station has them in there. So we're ready for the next guest. So we present them um, their cape, their smock, whatever they need. We get them the water right away. So it all flows and it's consistent. I think the hardest thing in this industry is consistency because we come up with something and then a week later, no one's doing it anymore, right? We come up with a great idea or a thought and then a week later it's gone. So you have to make sure that if you have the systems in place and you keep everybody on the same page, I think that's the goal of, for us as owners is to make sure that we keep the consistency because they're not going to. They're not gonna do it for you because you know it's just the reality of how people are. So you need a leader in there to make sure that the consistency stays. So just having these things written out. Salon menu, uh, let me just go back real quick. So salon menu, consultation, the shampoo experience, a finishing menu and team contest. I'm all gonna break down with some slides real quick. So the name. Does anybody have a trouble remembering people's names in here? Okay, okay, perfect. So it's the hardest thing ever to remember a name. I'm the worst. I, I'm the, constantly the guy that's like, We'll, we'll be out in the grocery store or whatever, and my wife's next to me, and she's like, some lady will walk up and start talking to me, and she's like, she'll walk away. She's like, who's that? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know her name. I, yeah, I can't introduce you because I don't know her name. But um, at the salon, we changed the system, so we know everybody's name, and we write the name on the mirror when they're coming in. So you got those washable markers that are made for mirrors now. We write the guest's name on the mirror, the great thing about that is me as an owner walking around, I know everybody's name, which is great. And as a stylist, I'll get halfway through a haircut and I forget her name, right? So I'm like, oh, yep, all right, I got it. And she thinks that I've got the station set for her. So it's all part of our presentation of our station. So we walk up to her, we write her name up there. She thinks it's so cool because it's her place now, you know, and you'll never forget her name. So that's something that we do. Team contests. Anybody run contests for their team now? I can't wait for Mevo. 
I will have the biggest flat screen TV in my salon with that board up. Absolutely, I can't wait. But for now, we run a team contest and we base it on a few different things. So let me see if, hopefully I didn't click too many. Service per guest, retail per guest, and rebooking percentage. This is a weekly contest for my staff. We check it every Saturday after work and the winner of each category gets 10 bucks. Now $10 doesn't seem like a lot of money, but you would not believe how much they fight over this, right? And I mean, if you think about it, if you win all three categories for the whole month, that's a good amount of money, right? 120 bucks. So I don't mind paying it out as, a, as an owner. It's a good expense for me because they're now spending the entire week competing with each other, trying to get the best numbers. The thing I like about these numbers is it doesn't matter if I've been doing hair for 10 years and then I have a future professional come work at my salon, I can compete with her. She can keep me on my toes because it's services per guest. So it's per guest numbers, it's not totals. I don't care, I don't think I've ever looked at what Thad brings in a month, total dollars. <coughs> I don't care because I know that number will go up if I'm focusing on important growth indicators like this. So that's a little contest that we do, it keeps them focused. You gotta check your numbers, your staff has to know their numbers. I know salon owners that I've talked to that won't even show their staff their numbers because they don't want them to know how much they're actually bringing into the business. Like that kind of stuff is crazy to me because if they don't know what they're doing, they, they don't know where they're going either. So you really have to let them focus on it. These are, the, are really important and it's an easy contest for them. So a menu. This is the cover of our menu. This is actually one of my staff members. Uh, it is a video that we shot of a haircut. Um, I think nowadays, well first off, we went to a hibachi restaurant last night and I was looking at the menu and it, it, here we go, it had no pictures. <laughs> so I'm more of a picture guy. I like Applebee's, I don't know what to tell you. But I, because I can see what the food's not really gonna look like, but what they're saying it's gonna look like, right? So I like a menu that has pictures and it, it, it's inviting. Um, I put a staff member on the cover because now they're picking it up. They're like, is that Drea on the cover? So now they, they pick it up right away and they start flipping through it. And everybody in that magazine is a client of ours. Their hair, whatever we've done to them. So, and their pictures, they don't have to be professional. I'm not a photographer, but you could take good pictures now with pretty much anything you have. So when you open up the menu, <coughs> that was misplaced. Here's the first, uh, first page. So we run starters. Starters, what do you guys think those are? Appetizers, Appetizers right? But they're also our wash house treatments. So things that we do in our shampoo room, that's what the starters are. I wanted to call them something that would kind of let them know that this is what you should get before we do the haircut. Uh, we do a Kara Triplex retreat, which is a Paul Mitchell treatment that they've come up with. But what we do is we just add in some hot towels. We make it really relaxing. It's an extra 15 minute kind of treatment and it puts a little keratin in their hair for 40 bucks. Uh, hey Sugar Sugar is another treatment that Paul Mitchell came up with, which I just love because it's raw sugar on the scalp, it's lavender shampoo, you're running it through the hair, but just presenting it and showing it in this way makes it more inviting. If I just write it on a brochure, a list of things that we do, you don't, no one's gonna get them. So um, that's a thing that we do as well. We have five different levels of haircut in my salon. I'm the cheapest salon in town and I'm the most expensive. Uh, my goal is to reach everyone, so it explains in our menu why we have different haircut prices because people ask. Um, and then we have the different levels. This is our color menu. So I didn't, it's not a McDonald's like I want a number eight kind of thing. So I didn't put a picture of what a single color looks like, what an ombre looks like. I didn't do that because we, we can uh, pull up things on Pinterest or whatever to show what that looks like. But I wanted to make it colorful and fun. So that says starters, it's supposed to say sides. That's really what it, it does say. Um, so we have our color and then we have side services that go with it. So if you want a single color with a couple foils, we have it written down how much it costs, why it costs that much. Additional color, so we have a standard mixture that we put in the salon. We do three ounces total, no matter what, because I don't think a client that comes in every four weeks should pay the same as a client that comes in every six months. Um, they have this much root or they have this much root. It's just a different thing. So we have an add-on service for color. 
uh, glazes, conditioning treatments, those kind of things. And we'll get into, I want to go back to the wash house real quick. This is actually, my shampoo room doesn't really look like this anymore. <laughs> Two weeks ago we changed it. I am one of those people that, some people are afraid of change. I can't go like one day without changing something. I've changed the name of this presentation five times. So um, same presentation, five different names. Uh, so I think it's just an evolution of who you are. I like when uh, my clients come in and they're like, oh my gosh, what is different today? Because I change it all the time. We did get new shampoo bowls. For some reason, no matter what shampoo bowls you buy, somebody's uncomfortable in them. <laughs> it doesn't matter how much money you spend on them, I don't understand. Uh, and then Minerva, one of our sponsors on Free Salon Education, they sent us these new bowls where you lay flat and then they have a pad in the middle of the sink that the head goes on. Holy, yeah, yeah. not one complaint yet. Yeah, you'll find the least complaints on that. The only one that doesn't do that, they have a short little tiny naked. <laughs> yeah. Put a little towel right there. You okay, all right. Yeah. But finally, I don't have to hear the complaints uh, of the sinks, but it's just about making the room relaxing. I buy over a thousand tea light candles a month. Um, we burn them all day long. We have different music back there. We shut the doors. It's just all about the experience. It doesn't have to be, I'm not saying I have a really fancy place. Uh, that's not the case. We're, it's a very funky, fun, loud music playing. But when you walk back into this room, you know you're in a different place. So um, that's you know, what that's all about. Consultation. A consultation is an important system to have in this salon, and it's also, especially if you're going to hire new staff, this is something that we have done in the past. Uh, anytime I hire somebody new, I start them off by doing this. They have to fill out this card for every guest. And what this card does is we transfer the information into Millennium, but it goes through everything that could possibly go wrong with hair. And that's what we need to know. Because if you don't know what type of hair you're dealing with, then you have no idea um, what the end result's going to be, really. So starting level, percentage of gray, pretty standard. Hair density. Why do you think hair density is important to talk about? And those of you that, are actually, that do hair as well, why do you think hair density is important to talk about in the beginning? Right. Amount of color used, right? There's no reason to go through a consultation, do somebody's hair, and surprise them with five extra bowls at the end. Because what you're doing is pushing them away at that point. So if they have really, really thick hair, I'm going to warn them that there will be a, a, probably an extra charge on that. Hair texture, fine, medium, or coarse is really important because we all know that coarse hair has 18 layers of cuticle and fine hair has maybe one. So if I'm going to totally need to know that before I mix any color service. Um, I also might need to do a pre-treatment on it to help kind of open it up a little bit. These are all little ways that you're going to have a more successful result at the end, but you're also going to be able to sell things as well, uh, things that are important. Uh, porosity, obviously, that's important. Products. What products are they using? We never asked this question really before. It's usually kind of like after I shampoo them, I'm like, what is this on your hair, right? What is that? So then they're like, oh, well, I use whatever shampoo. Who cares? But some kind of shampoo that's in a drugstore or whatever. And then we take our scissor and we, we shave off the waxy flakes on the cuticle, right? We've all done that. Um, this is a better way. This is where you can get it out of the way at the beginning. And if they use bad products and they're not cleansing their hair correctly, we can do a pretreatment to make sure we take it off. And that goes into the sides and starters as well. Uh, elasticity. This is good to track because if you think about it, you have a guest that comes in. You fill out this card, you circle, she has porous hair with bad elasticity in front of her face. What do you think she's going to want to do? Fix it. Yeah. And then six months later, you pull out this old card or you bring up the information on Millennium and you show her what we've done to her hair to make it better. And that's what our goal should be. I just read an article, somebody posted on Facebook yesterday. Um, it was how to make your hair from black to blonde in one day. Thank you, L'Oreal. But not professional, L'Oreal, whatever it is. Yeah, so, but this is the thing. The, people are putting that out there and people are reading it on the internet. I, I'm living proof. Those nine million views are not hairdressers, not all of them. So people are watching videos trying to learn things that we do. Now, my goal is I try to target it towards hairdressers and you know, you can only do what you can do, but you, people are learning to do this stuff at home. So you have to educate them 
on why it's important for them to be with us, and this makes it more professional. Obviously, box color is important. Medication, I like to ask that. I don't care what medication you're on, but a lot of people are on a medication, and it might have iron in it, so you might want to do a pretreatment because iron pulls red when you color it. So all those people that are like, I see red, that kind of thing, it might be because of something that they're taking daily. So everything leaves through our hair. So it's just really important questions. Again, this is on the slides you guys are going to take home. So you can print it out, do whatever you want with it. Now, this is where we talk about taking inspiration from everywhere. John already brought up the loyalty thing from the world of beers, right? He didn't have the picture. This is something this morning I went to your Publix over there. And I'm walking through. I used to stock shelves at a grocery store, third shift. And I walked in there this morning before anybody's awake in Miami, I think, is what happened. No one shopped yet. But this is what they do all night. And this is, I look at this stuff and how perfect that is. And then you think about your salon shelf and what your retail looks like, right? I tell all my staff, I want the products jumping off the shelf. Like they're almost ready to fall off, right? So somebody will catch them and then take them to the front counter and buy them, right? That, it should be the same way. They put their most popular brands in the center. They put more expensive stuff up top. It's just like liquor, right? More expensive stuff up top and then the new stuff or whatever is you know, not selling so well, it gets pushed towards the bottom because they want everything eye level. So this is an art that happens. I mean, they don't pay you well, that's why I don't do it anymore. But it is really cool, it's a cool thing. And I walked in there today and I was like, that is perfect. It's cool looking. The next thing, this is what John was talking about. This is the leaderboard for who drank the most beers ever <laughs> or something, I don't know. Somebody drank 2,000, somebody hit 2,200 yesterday, right? Yeah, while we were there. They ring a bell, they get all excited. And I don't, I, we don't have this place in Pennsylvania, so I don't know, I've never seen this. You guys might go there all the time, I don't know, but um, this is cool. And right away, I start thinking about the salon. Everything I see, I, I didn't come up with anything I'm talking about today. I, I see things everywhere. And I try to transfer into my life. So I don't look at who drank the most beers. To me, this is who had the most services or who had the most visits for the year. And then I start a ranking that way. So then I get guests that want it to beat somebody else. We have a chalkboard in the salon, and that's what I'm going to turn this into because I think it's cool. Um, so who had the most services for the year? Done. Uh, and we're going to make that happen when we get home today. So you know, just take inspiration from everything you see. These companies and salons are hard because we don't have money to market. We don't have a lot of extra cash laying around to go hire a marketing company. But these guys already hired a marketing company that came up with this idea. And now I can just take it. It didn't cost me anything. And transfer it into what we do, right? So utilize all these companies that you see doing things, doing fun things. Um, the reason, or my whole loyalty program stuff, I posted on the windows of the salon and everything. And I took that from uh, do you guys have Pet Boys, the auto place? So one day I was walking out of Pet Boys and I saw this huge sign that was talking about rewards and loyalty. And I just, I took a picture of it and I went home and that's how I designed the entire look of what it was. Um, you know, I gave it our little kind of edge or whatever to fit our salon, but I took the wording right from it. Somebody already paid somebody to do that, you know? And now I just have to reword it and make it salon friendly. but then I don't have to spend a lot of time on it. So just take inspiration from everything that you see. This is what I like to call making a comeback. And the most important thing you could do, John talked about frequency of visit. I'm going to give you some breakdown in numbers. Um, I don't even remember the original person that I, I learned this from, but Steve and Terry Cohen are, um, I've listened to their CDs a lot. I've listened to Robert Cromie's CDs a lot. That's where I started to learn about all this stuff. And then I saw, I met Millennium through Paul Mitchell, and I just, all of it started making sense. But this is a little equation that kind of shows you what little things that you do can make big results happen. So frequency of visit, what can this do for me? So let's look at the average client returns every 12 weeks for color. John talked about it. Now it's at 4.8? 4.8. OK. So we're going to use it at about four visits a year. Um, it's, it's easier math right now, but let's say average client returns every 12 weeks for color. $50 color service, so let's say it's like a single color. 
She gets that four times a year, so she's a $200 client, right? Now, what we want to do is get them in every four to five weeks. So you got to, obviously that's an extreme thing. Take somebody from every three months or every four months, whatever, to now every four weeks. But with loyalty programs and all that, you can get them in sooner. Our goal is every four to five weeks, you take that same $50 client, get them in 12 visits a year, now it's a $600 client. So you've taken them from $200 to $600. Pre-booking, what is the industry average pre-booking now? You know, it's, I, I can't say because not many people are doing it right. I'm sorry. R right, yeah. So I, I, it's sub 20% for sure. Right. So I, I was one of those people that um, I took a, I think I took my first Millennium class at uh, the Paul Mitchell Gathering like five or six years ago. And I was sitting in there and I was listening to them and, they were, and somebody was talking about pre-booking and I was like, oh, we're awesome at pre-booking. And then I got Millennium software in my salon and I started to realize that we were like 25% rebooking. Um, because the only people you really see pre-booking are the people that you see a lot, right? That favorite client. So you're thinking right now, all my, a lot of my clients rebook because I see them all the time, but that's not the majority of them. The majority are the ones you can't remember their name. So pre-booking, so I got back, it was 25%, so I made that my goal for the year was to get that up. So I started trying to figure out things to do. Uh, we, just right now uh, in our salon, we're running a contest, we're gonna run it all year long, every, at three months at a time, every quarter. I, I built this $300 basket of products. And if you pre-book before you leave, then we put your name into a, a box, and then at the end of the three months, we're going to draw a winner for the $300 basket. So trying to get people, if they pre-book or they buy a product, they get a ticket for every product they buy to go into the box, and then in March, we're gonna draw the winner. So my goal was, how do I get people to just make sure in January, February, which is awful for pre-booking, to get people to pre-book. Just last week, we were at 85% rebooking. Um, and that's, I know that because of the contest, because I get an email every Saturday, can I take the money out of the drawer because of the winner? So, um, but 80, 85%, I think, was that, Brian? Was it 80? Yeah, so it's just crazy that we went from 25%, I was talking to Thad on the way uh, to Miami about just the past, and we always had a stylist that was at like 25% rebooking, always. There was always one, um, and now we don't, I don't have that. And I think I don't have that because now we have all this stuff in place that people just understand. It's, it's, it's a language that we speak that you're automatically gonna rebook when you leave. There is no way you're not, not coming back here. So it just happens. Um, so that's really important. And then average ticket, does anybody know their average ticket in here? 66, that's great. How much are your haircuts? 40 to 75. 40 to 75, okay. 104, great. You do a lot of color? Yeah. Do you do men's cuts? I do, but not really. Not really. <laughs> uh, so, so yeah, that's great. So now we're gonna look at um, what can ra raising my average ticket do? So you have that $50 client we were talking about before, right? Because she only got a single color. If I wanna raise my average ticket, I gotta get them doing more services. Single color every four weeks equals $50 times 12 visits a year. So now we've got them coming in every four weeks is $600. Now, we're gonna upgrade them to a conditioning treatment, maybe a, a starter that we were talking about. So now, we're taking their average ticket to $85, the same 12 visits a year, now they're a $1,020 client. So it, it's so easy to take the people they already have, and John was talking about it earlier, you don't have to run out and try to grab new people. What we have to do is utilize the people and love the people that we already have and get them doing some more stuff. Now, the overview is industry average single color every 12 weeks, average ticket of $50, um, 250 guests times four visits a year is $50,000 a year. That's what you're bringing in, that's not what the stylist is taking home, right? Stylist is probably taking home 20,000 from that. So, if you look at those numbers, I mean, industry average stylist, we, I would say makes between 17 to $25,000 a year, right? So, and that's not okay. That's not where a place where I would want to be. I got into this industry. I wanted to have a house and a car and nice things. And I wanted to work hard and, and see something come from that. So if you look at what 
and I'm going to show these numbers, but this is not necessarily what every stylist is going to do in the industry, but it's what you could aim towards, which is a single color haircut and some kind of treatment, average ticket of $110, which isn't unattainable, 250 guests, 12 visits a year, $330,000 a year. Now, you're not taking that home, but you're, you're bringing home some pretty good money, right? So not every stylist, nor do I think most stylists are ever going to bring in $330,000 but it could happen, and that's the whole point of it. That's the whole point of this, this whole thing and, and focusing on numbers, is you take a $200 a, $200 a year guest, and you could transfer them, and it's just one guest at a time making those little changes that will help um, in, in the end result. So basically, this is a, a saying from a skateboarder, Rob Deerdick. I don't know if you guys know who that is, but. Um, probably younger people will know. Uh, but what I love about him, and I watch his show, and I, would I want to build a company like he has built, uh, not with skateboards, but I think th there's just something, basically what he does is he has a huge factory where it's, he has fun, he has a bunch of people surrounding him, they create cool things all the time, and he's found out how to take something that he loves doing and make money from it. And that's really what this industry is about. We all do something that we truly love doing, and we get to make money at the same time. And not many people can say that about their career. I mean, you could walk around to all the businesses around here and say, do you love what you're doing right now? And they're probably going to say no. Most people just do what they're doing to bring home a paycheck. So making your own luck is really, you're, you're not going to be a lucky person. Most people aren't. Most people are not in the right place at the right time. So what you have to do is make sure that you're networking with people, get involved with other hairdressers so that you can learn. Today is a day where you guys can all get together. And I know that I, I was listening, overhearing your conversation earlier, and all of us have had that happen. So this is where, this is something that, this kind of thing, this networking event, that's what I love about what Millennium's doing with these is you guys are all together and you probably aren't competitors. I'm going to say. Not really. And even if you guys have salons three blocks away from each other, who cares? It really doesn't matter. Because if we're all working and being smart, not everybody's going to want to go to my place and not everybody's going to want to go to yours. So it's just the way that it is. So network together, learn together, and share things. And that's why another reason why I developed Free Salon Education, I built a community on there so people could talk to each other and ask questions and grow. So make your own luck. Memberships. Now this is something, anybody doing memberships in their salon right now? OK. This is actually a pretty big thing in the industry starting up. Uh, some of it I agree with. Some of it I don't agree with. Um, but with memberships, this is what we do in our salon. So I know it's hard to read this, but it'll be in your thing. So the ladies' membership, platinum membership, is one color service per month. She gets a two-week color halo, which is just her part, uh, a um, one haircut per month, a blow-up bar style every week, so she can get a blow dry every week, and 10% off retail products. And that's $160 a month. Now, that could sound like a lot of money to you. It could sound like not enough money to you. It doesn't really matter. But what you're looking at is a frequency of visit a 12, right? So that's the goal of the membership. Now you have a, a client that's spending over $2,000 a year, and you're making her look beautiful all the time, and you're seeing her not every week. We have a lot of people on this membership, and we don't see them every week. People are busy. They can't come in. But they come in whenever they need a blowout, and they're going to look great. So that becomes a walking billboard for you, a frequency of visit of 12, somebody that never has gray roots popping out, and you know, it's a top client. We also have another membership that's just our standard that, does, that includes one color, a cut, two blowouts, and 10% off products, which is $125. Millennium, yeah? Yeah. So Millennium does this. So is this an add-on? It's an add-on service, right? So through Millennium, you can get an add-on service that allows you to be like a gym and take money out every month of your guests' accounts and sign them up for a membership. Then what Millennium does is it doesn't just take the money out, 
because that wouldn't really be helpful. You make packages that are involved in that membership. So I make a package with a color or a cut. So anytime that guest comes in, it checks off what they've gotten done. So you know what they have left to use for the month. So, um, so that works really well. Men's membership is pretty much the same. Uh, first class men's membership is unlimited haircuts, unlimited color, and 10% off retail, $75 per month. I say unlimited because it sounds cool. No guy's getting his haircut every day, I don't think. That would be weird. Unless he's obsessed with you, I don't know. It doesn't roll over. It doesn't roll over. I don't let it roll over. Um, they have to use them. Yeah, it's just like a gym. If you don't come in, we have a guest that pays for the membership. She comes in every couple months. I don't know why. But she does, and I love her. I don't know. She, uh, and that's the thing. It's, it's kind of one of those, like, they don't use everything that you offer. But it's cool that it's there if they need it. So uh, just like the men's membership, they don't come in every day. They come in maybe every week, every two weeks. But I don't know about you guys, but I love doing men's cuts every week on the same person. It's the easiest job I've ever had in my life because you're not recreating a haircut. Um, a long time ago, for some reason, guys started wearing textured hair and pushed everything to four weeks. So like, you have to re-sculpt everything every four weeks, right? But every two weeks they come in, you just dust them up, clean them up, shave their neck, and they're good. So I'm spending 10 minutes with him, and he's in and out. Uh, and then the color, I love having that to offer because for a guy, you use maybe a half an ounce of color for the most part. Uh, so, you know, you're throwing it on his head, he looks good, and it's another service that you can offer. We have a coach membership, which no guy buys because, not many of them, because no one wants to ride in coach. So, uh, unlimited haircuts you get and $10 off retail, which is $50 a month. So you have a $75 a month option or a $50 a month option. Do you apply that to all your stylists and maybe a different level? Uh, yes, that, that's the benefit of the membership. And right now, I used to have different levels of membership but I just found this to be easier. And that's why I priced them a little bit higher because it was just a little complicated. But you can do levels of membership. So you could have different prices for that. Coach, men and women or just men? Just men. So there's the men's membership, which is the first class or the coach. And then the ladies is platinum or uh, the standard. So <coughs> blow dry bar. Who knows about this stuff? Oh, yeah, yeah. I have a question in regards to the other. OK. Like, did you have any negative feedback from the service providers? Because I can already imagine my service yeah. provider saying, I don't want to do a membership um, client. I want to prioritize the client paying full price for the service. So here's the thing. I don't, I don't uh, push my stylist to sign people up for this. But if you look at different, there's different types of service providers, right? So I have certain staff in my salon that I wouldn't really recommend they do that. Like I don't, I don't, I have a guy, Brian. Brian has a mouth like no one I've ever met in my life. He can get anybody to do anything they want. And he, everybody's always pre-booked. Everybody's always coming in. Um, so I don't, he doesn't really recommend memberships because he's always doing different stuff with their hair and it's just, it's too much for him. Um, and his rebooking and, and uh, frequency of visit is really good. Thad loves members. He tries to get members all the time. So um, he's always getting people in. He has a lot of guys that use the membership because he knows that there is a benefit to it. Because if you're not good at pre-booking people and getting people in, then you need to have um, uh, that kind of system to keep that frequency of visit there. So what stylists may be up, uh, upset about or worried about is that the price is so small. But what they have to realize, and if you show them the math, it's 12 visits a year. So they're making a lot more money off of that person than they would if they just do their hair normally, for the most part. Do they get a percentage of like, yes. membership, the commission? Mm -hmm. They get uh, their commission, whatever their commission is, on the cost of the membership. So as soon as that EFT goes through, the electronic funds transfer, the, the payment goes through, they get their percentage cut in their paycheck. It's per service provider. So it's like they're booking that membership through that service provider. Yep. And no, not transferring. They can't transfer. Okay. Yeah. They can't see different people. Okay. 
Now, if you set it up as a package, they could. But then you'd have to pay them differently. So I just find that if you sign up for a membership with that, you go with that. And, you know, and that's just how it works. They always pre-book when you're on a membership anyways. So you don't have to worry about them needing to go to anybody else. Uh, that hasn't really been an issue. A couple cases where Thad might not have been there, my staff worked it out and um, they took care of them and we just paid that person for the month for doing their color or whatever. So the membership then is towards the service provider or does the salon market this? Because I can see how it can go both, both ways. Like the salon at the front desk has a, the membership and the service provider, but like how do you distinguish who's really like promoting it? Because what if my client goes to the front desk, sees a membership, and she says, oh my God, this is great for me, but I'm not really the one, you know, I'm booked solid, for instance, and I'm really not promoting that. Right. So how would you, I don't know, how would you go about that from? <coughs> Here's my thought process on memberships. I don't think they're for everyone, and if you have a staff that's 95% booked, I don't think you should do a membership. Um, I think a membership would be great for new talent, um, maybe people that haven't been in the industry so long trying to build their book, you could have a really cheap membership to try to drive traffic and, and fill a void. I don't think a membership is for everyone and for top service providers. So you could run a special or something like that, um, but I don't run just memberships. There are just membership salons. Uh, I know of a couple of them in New Jersey, but that's, I don't want to have just a membership salon. I like that it's an option and I can put it with other, um, you know, aim it towards what service providers I want to. Does that help? Yeah. yeah. I think that's kind of, that's perfect. And moving forward in my salon, I, I will probably target it more towards new talent because I think it's a perfect growing situation. Um, and it gets them new talent, and a frequency visit of 12 right away, which is impossible. And most of your top service providers will not have a frequency of visit of 12. And you could probably take that client that signed up that saw it at the front desk and you could look at her history and she's not spending as much money as she would if she spent $160 a month 12 times. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just wanted to do this. Um, so we've talked about it but never really put it in practice. Uh, we have a salon and spa. Okay. So we're thinking this might really work for the spa. Um, however, how do you, like if your front desk is the one educating the guest and he books, membership is that front desk getting it versus the spa or like how do you monitor that because I can see how like you know some people commission yeah commission wise I can see how the front desk would be doing more of that um, just from the people we have unless we have everyone I think it would be cool to give the front desk a bonus on that mm -hmm. um, but then the actual payment every month would go to go who's to doing, doing the service, doing the service. yeah and the, the big membership only salons are paying salaries to their staff so their membership only, they buy a membership and then the staff just gets paid whatever they get paid and probably bonuses for signing people up or whatever. I don't know the you know, specifics, but um, so that's, that's a whole different world that I, I'm not even in with salaries. So, um, you know, it's just, it's a lot of things to think about um, and just process it because I think it is a good thing to have. Um, I think it's cool that Millennium offers it. It's very simple. Like I said, you sign somebody up and you don't have to worry about it ever again. They take the payment out and uh, it goes right in the account. So, um, and they keep track of all the services that they've used. So just something to think about. Now, blow dry bar. How many people know about this? Okay, pretty much everybody at this point. Um, how many people like the idea? Okay, we're, we're honest, thank you. Um, here's what I love about this and why it is a cool company. Um, but why I'm going to take their business from them at my salon and, and I hope they don't try to open one in my town because Blow Dry Bar is really cool and here's a couple things. They had $20 million in sales. They have 23 salons in six states, which is probably even higher now. They, have 50, they service 50,000 women per month. So what that tells me is that we have been doing something wrong and it's not their fault and I know a lot of salons as I go around the country and I teach in salons, they're very upset that there's blow dry bars because they're taking our blow dry business. Well, I don't think we've been doing the blow dry business. I don't think we've been pushing blow dries. I don't think we got creative with blow dries. They did, they got creative with it and now blew up the blow dry. 
So now the great thing about us is we have blow dryers at our places. <laughs> so we can do this too, very easily, right? We can have a blowout station. We can have different things. So we took, I take a look at these sales. That just inspires me to want to have a blow dry bar menu in my salon. The average dry bar net profit is 15% to 35%. Average salon is a lot less than that. So there's not much cost in a blow dry. It doesn't take that much time and you're gonna make more profit off of blow dries. Running specials during slow times. This is a cool way to promote the happy hour kind of thing. Have fun, be creative with it. That's all they did is, and it's not even that creative because we've been saying bar behind everything for a while. Toolbar, color bar, now we have a blow dry bar, right? So, but, and, and every one of those concepts, we put alcohol in it somewhere. So they have all different martini blow dries and all that stuff. So run specials during that, come up with creative names, get your staff involved, let them come up with the names because they're probably really creative and, and as you add more people to it, they get fun and funky. And when they come up with the names, they're gonna start promoting them. And when you're slow, blow dries are the best thing that you could get into your business. So try to do that. This is our blow-up bar menu. Again, that's one of our clients. Uh, we have our step one shampoo. Uh, so they pick their shampoo, what type they'd like. Step two is the massage. What type of massage would you like on your head? And then choose your blowout, and we have different blowouts for them to try. And it's $30. Now, if they want a special updo or style or something like that, that's not a blow-up bar. That's in a different menu. That's in a formal type menu. This is 30 bucks you're getting a blowout and a glass of wine, right? So just another cool thing. Then you look at your Google search, right? If you type in blowout bar in New Hope, Pennsylvania, which is where my salon is, we come up because I started promoting that we do blowout bar services. So Google picked it up. So now if you start to research that, we come up for it. Um, there's just different things that you can do, but you have to utilize the fact that this is a term that's being used to search for places to get their hair blown dry. So start adding that to the content on your website and creating menus and creating a buzz in your salon. This is our wedding hair uh, menu page. So this is all our book of our menu. Um, VIP packages, bridal parties over five or more get an exclusive salon experience. That works for my salon because it's small and really <laughs> they're not getting an exclusive experience. We don't have room for anyone else. But, uh, so we just try to make it sound better. But uh, exclusive salon experience, they get a fruit and snack tray and complimentary mimosas involved with the bridal party. So we throw a party for them. Uh, we shut down the salon for an hour and a half, two hours, and we do the bridal party. It works for me, probably won't work for bigger salons, but it's just another cool way to, to talk about weddings and, and get some wedding business there. Men, the menu for men. Um, how many people have a big men's clientele? Let me ask this other question to you. This is the your real, but don't, this is the your real prices on you when you call it? Yeah, this is my real, oh. the real menu, yep. All right. Um, so this is our men's menu. It's another page. You got to dedicate stuff to the guys because what we love about guys is they have a frequency of visit of between 12 and 24 times a year. So you look at your women's cut. She comes in, she gets a, you know, let's say a $50 haircut. She's only coming in four times a year. You're only making 200 bucks off of her. You got a guy, a $25 haircut, but he comes in 24 times a year. I like him, right? I get to know him. He tips well. We have, there's, everything is great about guys, but <coughs> salons don't cater to them as much or we don't try to build it, yeah? No, but a neck shave, the funny thing about that, we don't shave it. We use a feather razor with some shaving cream and a hot towel, so they get the effect of it, but it's guarded. So it still gets it nice and close, not as close as a barber would, but we don't have a barbering license, so you know, we just we clean it up. Plus, I'm not training my staff on a straight blade necessarily, but like Thad, uh, Thad does a straight blade. In PA, you don't need a barbering license. Uh, Thad, Thad does a straight blade, and we have another guy who does a straight blade as well. Um, so, you know, but they, and they have a huge male clientele because of that. When you say neck shave, are you talking back here? Or back here, okay. yeah. Now with men's color, is that just like flashback or camo or is that permanent color? 
it's whatever they want. Okay. Um, you're using so little, using so little I, it doesn't matter. And I'm not a big fan of guy lights and bro lights and, and you know, hombres and all that stuff. Like that's, right? <laughs> so that's not like, some people like to put that on their menu. I don't think any guy wants to hear that. So I just said, hey, dude, color, cool, 20. All right, we're good. That's. Uh, Yep. Nope. Yeah. And we call it detail. I mean, it could be waxing. If they want it waxed, we would do that for $10. Um, some guys take advantage of that. Uh, but eyebrow detail sounds better than eyebrow wax. Yeah. And then I can build the conversation on that. Would you like your eyebrows detailed? Yes. Let's talk about the options for that. We have waxing. Ooh, no, no, no. OK, cool. So we'll just trim them up with the scissors, that kind of thing. And all of that is included. Um, in the haircut. Now, what's the determining factor as far as the fun part goes to the cut in? Because we have different levels. Okay. Yeah. So it's not necessarily if they just want to, you know, if you're running a number one all over their head, that's 20, but if they want a bald fade, that might be 25 or 30, or it's just the different level of experience. It's, yeah, it's the different level of experience of the stylist because I, like the cleanup for me is a little bit cheaper, but anything above and beyond that, even if you are going to, you know, buzz somebody's head, then you know, we're going to do the neck shaving and all of that stuff with it. So, you know, and if you don't want that, then you might not want to come to, like, I would even recommend you go to just, you know, somebody that's not doing that for 13 bucks or whatever. Because it, it really is an experience. Well, now, that would be my question to you because I'm coming from a barbershop situation into a salon where we were, you know, I was doing 30 haircuts a day, but they were 10 bucks a pop. Right. Now I'm going into a place where they're 35 to 40 dollars. Right. 35 a cut, but how do you start to raise? Raise them up? Yeah. So I would say from that situation, you probably are going to lose quite a few. Oh, yeah. Uh, but I would just say, you know, if you really kind of, if you make the experience great, then the people that start coming into you, it's not going to matter. And you're only going to need to do 10 haircuts a day now, so it's fantastic. And you can really focus on your work and your art that, that you want it to be. Because when you're trying to bust out a haircut every 10 minutes, that was, when I was in beauty school, one of my teachers said, she's like, I work at one of the chain salons. And she said, if I, what'd she say? If I do 20 haircuts a day, I can make, I think she said I can go home with like 70 bucks or something. <laughs> it was something like that. Like, she's not bringing in 70, but like that's what she was making. I'm in Iowa, too, at this point, right? So I went to beauty school in Iowa. Um, so the average haircut there is like $10, I think. But so she's like pumping out haircuts. I said, if I have to do 20 haircuts a day, I'm going to lose my mind. Yeah, no way. No one can do 20 haircuts a day. And those people that do 20 haircuts a day, a lot of people have a bad rap with those kind of salons. I think it's amazing that you don't mess it up really bad doing 20 haircuts a day. I would put everybody in a ponytail and just chop it and then send them out. Like, there you go, there you go, you know, or hang them upside down, just cut it. So you can't like, so that's the thing. Focus on the experience, focus on the art of it, and really detail, and, and it'll be worth, you know, the amount of money that you're paying. This is another thing we did for color, 10 years younger and 10 minutes for free. Guys color I give for free the first time, every time, because I also did concrete construction um, when I was before I went to beauty school I thought I would try everything first and then found out that cutting hair was really fun but uh, I was in concrete construction and everybody would call me Eminem because I would bleach my hair all the time and uh, you know you just get made fun of because you do it horribly right and it's orange and it's patchy and it's weird or guys try to color it and they make it like shoe polish black and it just doesn't look right so we did it 10 years younger in 10 minutes for free we can make you look 10 years younger in 10 minutes, I'm not gonna charge you for the first time to show you that no one will know that you got your hair colored. I love guys, because they, the more you make it look like you didn't do anything, the happier they are. <laughs> so you put color on there, and I usually go a couple shades lighter on the color, so it doesn't even, it barely even shows up, but they're happy about it, because it just masks it a little bit, and you know, then I got a client that not only has a frequency of visit of 12 to 24 times a year, but now I got them doing color as well on that. So now you're up, upping your average ticket. 
A lot of people complain about their men's prices. I color 85% of my guys that walk in the salon. Whether it's a little bit of just kind of feathering some lightener on, not to give them guy lights, but just to pop some dimension in. Just to move it a little bit. Uh, it's only in there for three minutes, but it just gives it a little bit of a sun. Because we don't have sun where we are. I don't know if you guys know. Sun doesn't really come in the winter time. So we, you know, we lose all of that. I, the whole time I'm like, I have no tan <laughs> at all. And I'm in Miami. I, and I tried to stand outside yesterday. It was raining the whole time. So I'm like, I got to go back. I'm not tan. This is no cool. But the guys, like, they, they just love, all you have to do is you color them, and they're good for life, and you got them booked. And now my guys come in. It takes me no time whatsoever. I finish the cut. I throw on a little bit of color for 10 minutes, and then they're, it's an extra $25 or whatever on, on top, or 20 bucks on top of the service. So. All right, there are three types of workers. Those who get things done, those who watch things get done, and those who wonder how so much got done. Now, I just thought this was funny. I don't even know who wrote this. I didn't write it, but, um, but it's true. And what we have to do is we gotta take, I, I try to look at myself sometimes, and I look at like, why does my staff do this? Why does my staff do that? And then I realize that I kind of do it too. So that's why, they learn from me. It's kind of like I have a six-year-old son, and you know I look at things that he does, and it's exactly because I do them as well. We have a huge influence in our staff. Uh, sometimes you know we take on a lot of stress. We do a lot of things. It's hard for you know we look at them and why why don't you you know clean that or pick up after yourself or whatever. You really have to look at yourself too, and focus on becoming a great leader and it's something that I try to work on a lot and just you know as as the salon grows and getting your staff involved in everything all this stuff that happens it can't happen unless your staff's on board with it was what we kind of talked about so the way that you're gonna get your staff on board is if they're involved in it in creating the menu in doing these different things um, but you gotta hold their hand all the way through it because I said to my staff, I'm like, can you, uh, I'm like, can you just work on a color menu for me? Just c let's start coming up with ideas. And then two months later, I'm like, so how's the menu? Mm, oh, yeah, I forgot. And I'm like, okay. So you've got to really just set a time aside and get together with them and come up with ideas together. And then you'll really start to see it blossom. You know, if, you, if I go and create a menu and I just put it on my staff station, I'm like, look at the new menu. Here you go. Use it. They're not going to use it because they weren't part of it, so they're not excited about it. So if you get them involved, you get them excited, they're going to talk about it as well. This is one of, one of my last slides, and we'll take a couple questions. Um, this was an old movie theater, obviously really old, um, near my house, and I would drive by it. I used to teach at um, a salon-centric distributorship every two weeks for a while. And I would drive by it, and I just kept seeing it getting worse and worse, and falling apart and then one day I drove by and it said that's all folks thanks for 30 years and then I started to think about it and, and it's sad uh, to think that you know a business like that is probably family owned went out of business there's all these new movie theaters and all of that and then they pop up this sign and I'm looking at it like this business hasn't changed in 30 years it's the same right so the reason it's shutting down is because they stayed the same you have to evolve, you have to change. You know, there's still people writing on paper appointment books. You know, I remember when I first started working at the salon, the owner had a, uh, a paper appointment book and people just write down where the hell they wanted to. Like I, I did $300 today, pay me, you know, like the, it, it was trust and it's just paper and you don't know. Now most people are on computers, but it's just, you know, you got to evolve and you got to come up with loyalty programs. You got to come up with all this different stuff in your business and just keep thinking. And when I said earlier, take inspiration from everywhere, that's really what it is. I mean, everywhere I go, I'm looking at things and trying to transfer them into my own business so that my business stays afloat with all the other ones. If you look at movie theaters now, they have recliners and every seat. You have your own table. You have you can order alcoholic beverages. You, you know, it's a very, you have a, a waiter. Like this place didn't have any of that. So that's why they're closing down. And you know, 
And I don't want to see that happen with any salon business. And most salon businesses don't last over 10 years. So um, with that being said, I have stuff to give you guys. Yay. <laughs> um, but what I want to do is who, who has had a salon in here for, who's been an owner for five years? What about 10? 10 years. Awesome. All right. So uh, that actually, can we give them some stuff? I have all kinds of stuff. So free salon education, I wanted to, I worked for a corporation for a long time. And I wanted to um, build a website where it didn't charge you guys. And um, I had companies that helped support it. And that's what it is now. And I have awesome companies like Millennium and uh, Demand Force that we talked about earlier and Minerva. And all these companies are starting to get on board with, with what's happening. And I don't ever want to charge you guys to learn because I think that's the whole point of this. Um, this whole thing and this whole weekend, Millennium, you know, it was, there was a ticket cost, it's going to a local charity, right? Um, you know, that's not, it's not really what it's about because in the end of it all, um, obviously I have a store online so you can buy combs and stuff. That also helps, t-shirts, um, but, but the education is free and that's, you know, I wanna keep it that way. So um, who are the people with 10 years? So now let's, uh, so we have some YS Park combs. You just get, yeah. They're cool. I don't know. I found them in, a, in my stuff. Um, so there's another saying that we talk about. This is one of the shirts. This can mean a lot of things. But we also, for a long, like my goal is to put out an education video every Monday. I used to teach every Monday. It takes a lot of work to put together education uh, videos because there's a lot of editing involved. Uh, but we try to make them full length, uncut, so you guys can see the whole process step by step um, and, and, the whole, and everything. So the I Love Mondays really came from us putting out education every Monday. But when you wear this shirt around, it's pretty funny. <laughs> and it's a good conversation starter because people are like, people get so pissed when you wear it on a Friday. <laughs> it's really funny. So. Um, so let's see, I'm gonna give, I don't know, I, I have no idea what size they are or anything. So <laughs> you probably got like a, tr uh, yeah. Um, so, but here's the thing, anybody have any questions about anything? Because you're gonna have so much time to talk with the Millennium crew and that's really where you learn. I, we were at dinner last night and, and they started talking about productivity and I was like, oh my God, I don't know my salon's productivity. I have to go look at that. Like there's always something that you're not looking at and why you should be involved in these things. Um, here, as an institutional leader here, are you going to be doing more like um, videos for like that new style that's coming out? Like maybe something along the line of, you know, obviously you're, you're catering to the industry, but just maybe a, maybe one or two, just stating, you know, this is what you know, what the industry is, you know, what to expect, and you know, maybe to help the educational. Yeah, that, um, so we have, first off, we have an iPad and Android app for free salon education. It's 99 cents, and the only reason I charge 99 cents for that, it's a one-time thing, because they charge me money every month to have the app, so I have to try to, you know, whatever. But, so it's 99 cents, but it has all of our education videos all organized on it. That, we have a 14 steps to becoming a better hair cutter. So you, you open that up, it starts at step one, like what comb to use and why. Um, my big thing with education is no, everyone always talks about how you should do things, but they never break down why in depth. And so anytime I'm making a video, I really try to think about the questions that are gonna be asked and, um, and go through it. So we built 14 Steps to Becoming a Better Hair Cutter. It's, it's you know, quick two and a half minute videos that just go through the whole process um, from standing or how you should stand, body position, hand position, comb, scissor choices, all of that stuff. Uh, we have lots of videos. I also have a video, how to become successful in the hair industry I put out a little bit ago. Um, and it's all about relationships. And that's, you know, we talked about that a little bit today, but relationships are really important because um, 
you know, people can choose any salon they want, and they're going to, and just like we said, people aren't loyal unless they have a reason to be. The reason that they'll be loyal to you is if you've developed a relationship with them. You know, if you mess up that relationship with not being able to get them in or, you know, just having a pissy day and then all of a sudden, you know, they're upset with you. All these things factor into the relationship. So you can't take for granted the clients that you already have because if you're doing that, you're going to have to get a lot of new clients to, to fill in the void there. So just make sure that you focus on the relationship, focus on these numbers, and there's no way that your salon could not be successful if you do that. Time is pretty much up. I... Uh, if you guys have any questions, I'll be here for a little bit. Um, I want to say thank you, and I have, just make sure you follow us on, on the website because all of this stuff that I've talked about, we talk about weekly on there. So uh, if you get involved in the podcast, you can ask questions. We'll answer them on the podcast live. Uh, freesaloneducation.com. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So thank you guys very, very much.